Okay, we got a Dell Inspiron 1525 here. Somebody spilled beer in it. Now, apparently this computer worked for about a month or so after it happened, and then it just started, you know, fritzing out. So we're going to take a look at the motherboard and see if we could bring this thing back to life. When somebody spills something in a laptop, I don't even try to power it on. The first thing I do is pull the AC adapter out, power down the laptop, pull out the battery. You don't want any charge in this thing, so get that battery out of there. That's the advice you should give somebody if they bring their computer in. Pull that battery out and say, you know, uh, don't even try powering this thing on. We're going to have to open it up, clean every part inside first, and then see what happens. Because you don't want to be responsible for frying the laptop. And um, so we're just going to start taking parts out now. Just take this cover off. This cover probably covers the CPU, RAM, and uh, wireless card. So let's get that off first. Okay, and there's usually a little slot there you put a finger or a screw in there, a screwdriver in there or something and pry it out. Oops, there we go. Okay, let's take a look just off the bat and see if we see any corrosion, which is going to be like white, um, like a white crustiness on the circuit boards anywhere. And it looks okay here, so let's, let's pour, pour, pour out the RAM. Let's take a look at it. Looks all right. Pull out the stick of RAM. Take a look at it. It looks okay. All right, we're here at the wireless card, so we might as well get that out. There's a wireless antenna. Let's just put that out of the way for now. There's one screw holding this wireless card in. Let's get that out. That felt a little sticky, but... And that felt a little sticky. There's a little bit of a residue there. I don't know if it's glue or if it's beer. I have a feeling we're going to see some stickiness in this baby. Alright, let's loosen up these wires. We're going to have to get these wires out of the picture. This is for WLAN, this is for WAN, which is like a mobile broadband cards, and this is your Bluetooth, the blue wire. It's nice they usually make the Bluetooth wires blue, just so you know. And we're going to have to get these out of the way, because when we go to pull the screen off, which we're going to have to do, these all feed up through the top of the screen because they're antenna. They need to get to the highest point. So let's just get them out of the way. When we get the screen off, we're going to have to push these through the hole right here in the laptop. And what else can we do while we're down here? Well, this is the CD drive. So let's just pull that out. That's one screw. I'm starting to smell beer as I take this thing apart. This feels kind of sticky. Yeah, that's kind of sticky. This is very unprofessional, but my cat just walked into the picture. Cody, get out of here. Get out. <laughs> she doesn't usually like the camera that much. Alright. This is the heatsink over the CPU and also looks like the video card. So, we loosen up these four screws, five screws here. Pull it up, and now we'll be able to pull the heatsink out. And there's CPU, and that is some other chip, probably the... That's probably the graphics card, I'm not sure. Let's just put this off to the side. And we'll also take this opportunity, before we put it back in, to clean all the dust out of here. Okay. Let's get that processor out, too. Just put a, screw, a flathead screwdriver in, you twist the unlocking feature there, and now the processor will pop right out. Put it into a safe anti-static spot. And our goal now is to get under the keyboard and get the screen off. So Dells, in their usual fashion, have a little slot right here that you can put a screwdriver or something of the sort in and pry it up. And that's gonna allow us to pull this panel off, which I call the hinge cover plate. 
and this one will get access to the keyboard and the screen. Now it's giving me a little bit of a problem, so I'm thinking that these two screws are holding it in down here. So let's just pull that screw out, which also is labeled, so it's good. We could, we know where that screw goes. Sometimes, not on Dells normally, but a lot of computers, Toshiba's mainly have labels next to the screw holes so you know which screws to take out. And since we're down here, and I want to get the hinge cover plate off, let's take these two screws off because these might be holding it on too. You never know. We're going to have to take them out anyway at some point, so might as well do it now. And these two screws, and I just took out those two screws, sorry about that. Okay, now we have those four screws out. There should be nothing holding this hinge cover plate on now, so let's try that again. Put a little pressure here. It comes out much easier, so yes, those screws were holding it in. And you just gotta jiggle this guy, it'll come out. Be careful. This has the new Dells have this new touch panel here, so there's gonna be a ribbon cable attached to it. And we can pull that cable out. I'll put that back in for now. I have a feeling it might be easier to detach it from the motherboard than there. That looks like it's pretty securely on there. So let's get onto the keyboard and see if we can get that ribbon cable off. There's two screws holding the keyboard on. Okay. Now you have access to the keyboard on a Dell. You just pop that up. That comes right out. And yes, it's much easier to get this one out than the other one. The other one was kind of glued in there or stuck in there with some tape. So let's just push each side of that connector up and pull that ribbon cable out. Now we can get this guy out of the way. And let's take a look at what we got here. Let's see if we see any major damage yet. I don't see anything yet. This computer is actually a little more complex than I thought. Look at all these wires. Oh man. All right, well, now that we got the keyboard off, let's get the screen out of the picture. The screen looks like it's held on by these big guys here. So let's get those screws out of the way. You might have to hold the screen while you do this so it doesn't go flopping all over the place. Okay, and then here's these wires I was talking about that are feeding up through the screen. Covered by this thing here, which is, this may possibly be a webcam or another wire that goes to the top of the screen, but that should pull right out of that slot here. Okay, let's just kind of try to be gentle here. There we go. Let's feed that through. And the speaker is also covering these wires, so let's get that speaker out of the way. Okay, now we can get access to these wires. This is the LCD ribbon. Just pops right up. I'll feed that through as well. That's feeling a little sticky. All right, now let's feed these wires through.
a lot of lanes of wires here. This is a newer type of Dell, so these Dells are definitely getting more complex as they go along here. Okay, now it looks like all the wires are exposed. We should be able to pop the screen off now. This might be some, some other screws holding it in. Check the back. Yeah. Nope, it just had to be pulled off a little bit. Now that we got the screen out of the picture, let's get this other speaker off here. See, the problem is as these computers get more and more new and complex, they add more and more components, and they're getting more and more tighter spaces, so they're a little smaller. And it's held on by a piece of black tape here. Which is going into the motherboard through this connector here. Slides right out of there. And now, speakers come on. You know, I suspect, you can't, I can't see any corrosion in these areas here, but I suspect under this metal plate we're going to see some white crusty corrosion. I'm just going to start loosening up some ribbon cables here, getting them out of the way. Okay, another ribbon cable here. That circuit board doesn't want to come out yet. I will leave it on there for now. All right, let's plan our next point of attack here, our next move. We want to get to the motherboard, so got to get the top cover off of the bottom cover. So let's just start taking these two screws out here and see what happens. these ribbon cables unattached. This thing is much more complex than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Screws out. Let's see. This screw might give us a problem. That looks like most of the screws on the top layer here. Okay, let's flip it around. Take all the remaining screws out of the bottom part of the case now. This is the hard drive. You can see about a little hard drive symbol right there. It's gonna pull right out when you take those two screws out. Just checking to see if I have all the screws. Looks like I do. So let's see if this bottom cover will come apart from the top cover. Okay. 
Okay, we got some action over here on this side. And so far so good. And it looks like there's some connectors here on this end that are being held in. We're being very ginger here. We don't want to stress anything, force anything, or break anything. Okay. I can see what it is. These four little spots right here. Okay, I got that far. Got the top cover off. Let's take a look at the motherboard now see what we see and sure enough right here some white that white corrosion right there we're gonna have to get that off believe it or not that looks like the extent of the damage so that little spot right there of corrosion caused this problem. That little spot. But I like to play it safe so I'm going to look under this black tape here. See if there's any other spots we see. Looks okay there. And everywhere else looks perfectly fine. Alright, well, the method I like to use, and some people um, like to use a different way. I've been using Purell hand sanitizer to uh, clean up the corrosion and a toothbrush. Now, there's been a little bit of concern that toothbrush nylon bristles cause an electric charge. Um, but I've had success with this, so if you really want to play it safe, get a, um, a brush that has non-static uh, bristles. And since you might be concerned about the ingredients in Purell or hand sanitizer, you might want to use like a rubbing alcohol maybe or um, distilled water, or distilled or purified water. i got to find out which one of the text I know uses. But I like the alcohol-based um, hand sanitizer. Plus, it makes the laptop smell very nice and clean. No, I'm just kidding. That's just a favorable side effect. And I just put it on, on the end of the brush and I just scrub that baby. Scrub all around the area. I don't put too much because it is a liquid we're throwing on there. And you never want to have a liquid on a motherboard. But because it's alcohol based, it's very, it evaporates very quickly. I'm just spreading it out so it'll evaporate quicker here. Just, just hitting all the areas just in case. Now, because I want to be thorough here, I'm going to check the underside of the motherboard as well. So let's find out how to get the motherboard off. Well, this is in the way, so we got to take this screw off. This is screwed in here. Let's unscrew that. And we got two over here. Two. This is the fan for the CPU. Let's unplug that baby. And that looks like pretty much it. Let's see if we got it right. There's one right here. And a ribbon cable right here. We don't want to break, so let's attach that. And 
and might as well get this guy out of the way. There's the PCMCIA slot. Oops. Well, that piece broke off rather easily. Oh good, it didn't break. Whew. It's just a little shield for the headphones and whatnot. up here and there we have the motherboard let's spin it around and see what we see looks okay I see no more corrosion here just want to check it anyway make sure every base is covered you because I've done it in the past, I've seen it in the past, where the place where you least expect to see corrosion from where liquid got in, it got in there. So you gotta check every little crevice. Okay, let's check here again. I'm gonna give it one last look over here. See if I see any. Sorry if this is getting a little boring on the tape there, but I gotta be sure. Especially in a little circuit like or a chip like that, with the really close connectors all around the edge. You'd be amazed if water get in, gets in there, it'll short out like 10 of those things with one little job. 10 connectors next to each other is what I meant. That appears to be it. This guy might have got lucky with the beer here. All right, now that the motherboard is clean, let's look at the other pieces here and just make sure. Okay, this is a USB port and an S-Video jack, which I hope, wish, would hope they'd stop putting on laptops. And here's your power port and another USB port. Let's pull that out. I just have a suspicion the power port might be a little soaked. I could be wrong. Oops. Sorry, there was one screw right there I had to take out. And then a whole piece comes out here. Let's take a look at this. Nah, it looks clean. Looks fine. Looks fine. Looks like it was just that one spot. So, since we did clean the corrosion off that spot, that's there's no guarantee it's going to work, but that will increase our chances of getting it to work. And since we checked everything now, it's time to start putting this thing back together. This circuit board up here also concerned me. I wanted to get that out. Because this is towards the top of the computer where if somebody did spill something, it might get onto the circuit board, but it looks all right. This is the power button. Power button board. Buttons seem to be pressing down okay. And our last board is this one here, but this one looks okay. But, you know what? I always do this. I always gotta be so super sure. Let's get this board out and check it. Let's check everywhere. 
since we have it open, we don't want it, this board to be the cause of all the problems. So. It's not going to take long to check it out. Spin it around. And it does look like there's a little bit of liquid right there. Just a spot, but it's, it's on the case of the USB port. Just a spot. That might be glue. I, I don't know if that's the beer. And I don't see any corrosion on any other part of this board, so... No, this thing's clean. You know, he must not have spilled that much beer in this thing. And, and the, the other fact is, I think that computer manufacturers are getting a little smarter in their design and making the computers less susceptible to getting liquid on the motherboard. It kind of, it kind of, the keyboard kind of filters it out to the edges. Okay, let's put this baby back in. Now we gotta start screwing everything back together. These two screws here. And then we gotta reattach the CPU fan. Always make sure you reattach the CPU fan because if you don't, Things gonna overheat, and then you gotta take the whole thing apart again. It's a major pain. I've done it. That's one of the reasons why I'm making this video, so you guys don't have to go through all the learning pains that I had. This stuff. Okay, let's attach that ribbon cable just so I don't forget. One screw there. Everything's still flush and feels good. Let's attach that ribbon cable, push the connector in, lock it. Now put this guy back on. PCMCIA slot. Oops. It's another good reason to get a magnetic screwdriver. So you can catch those little screws when they go flitting all over the place. Okay. Looking good so far. There was a screw holding the motherboard in there. Let's get that in. And that is the wrong size screw. Most motherboards have this white arrow, which you can see right there. And that white arrow will basically tell you which screws you need to take off on the motherboard. And this is a newer model, so this is the first time I, I took a motherboard out of this guy. And there's not a lot of white screws around, but that's the only one I see. Okay. Now, take note, you know, there's a lot of screw holes. I didn't put screws in here, here, and here, 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 here. A lot of those get put on after another layer goes on top, like the top part of the case goes on, and then they get screwed in. So, you don't want to put screws in prematurely and then have this go on and cover all the screws you just did when you got to, when these, when screws are going to need to go in these holes here, if you get what I'm saying. So, I just want to double check to make sure we got everything in there properly. It's actually not a PCMCIA slot, it's an express card slot. Okay, that CPU fan's plugged in, that ribbon cable's in, this ribbon cable's in, no other ribbon cables hanging out loosely. Okay, I think it's time to put the top cover on. Let's look under the top cover as well and take a look here. See if we see any corrosion, maybe on the touchpad. And the touchpad looks okay. Here's another circuit board here for the LEDs right there that looks okay yeah I think this guy might have lucked out as far as the amount of liquid that actually got into the machine hopefully we could bring this thing back to life poor little laptop a 
and this cover should just snap back in. This was the part that gave us a problem before. Let's snap those back in. They are all in. Looks tight. This. That's the lock for the wireless card, which is sticking up quite a bit. It feels like something got in there. Let me see if I can take a look at that. Okay, let's just take a quick look and see if we missed anything there. That's sticking up quite a bit. And it's another lesson to learn these, oops, I'm sorry. These wireless cards have switches and those switches attach to the motherboard. And if you put the motherboard back on, and put the top case on, and that switch isn't lined up properly, then the wireless card won't be able to turn on. Let's just pull this one part off. Take a look under here and see what's going on. This is something I missed before. This is a this is a circuit board under there. Let's see what's going on with that thing. It's very sticky. It had a ribbon cable attached to it. There's a little circuit board there. It's a little sticky right here where the LED is and the switch is real sticky. Let's see if we can at least loosen it up a little bit. I don't see a ton of corrosion, but something got to this little board. I'm glad we checked that. There's the switch. Okay, now this is the part I'm talking about you have to line back up. This switch is just sitting in the motherboard and could, and could be moved right now, very easily. That's got to line up with this part when we put it back. Otherwise, it is not going to work. Aha! Uh -huh. Let me show you guys something here. Definitely liquid got on that little guy there. I'm glad we checked this. Right there. Corrosion all over that little guy. You see black and green and white colored. Right there. Let's clean up that switch. Let's clean up this cable and then see if this switch or little board with the switch on it may be fried, might be causing a problem. Let's see what we got in here. I think a piece of scotch bite might do us good now. Something to clean up the, these contacts here. I gotta run out and get that, I'll be right back. Okay, we got some scotch bite, which is this here. Excuse the placement of the camera, he needed to move it a little bit just because the light from um, that I'm using to, to show this was uh, burning up the camera. So you just take some scotch Brite and uh, take it on that ribbon cable that's all corroded and give it a couple wipes and get that corrosion off. And you'll see that the ribbon cable looks a lot better now. And then take the circuit board and because if the end of the ribbon cable was corroded you know that the inside of the that port there is corroded so we got to Get in there and clean that too. So I like to do that with the old toothbrush. Just get inside the connector. Clean it up. Get in there. Clean that up. Clean a whole board up. Unstick this switch best we can. This switch may never work again. Who knows? But we're going to clean it up. Okay, then we're going to put it, the ribbon cable back in. So now we can genuinely say we checked everything, and it's really a good thing that we did.
Now if it looks like that this is still causing a problem, we might have to disable this whole area. But let's put everything back together and see what happens. Okay. You know what, we're going to try a different plan of attack here. We're going to try to power on the computer in this state here, okay? We know that, just from looking at this circuit board and looking at this panel here, that this is the power button and this is the media, home, whatever that Dell thing is button. So that's the power button on the right hand side. So that's how we, we know how to turn the computer on. Um, now the processor's out and there's no RAM in, so let's just throw a stick of RAM in. And put the processor back in. Let's lock the processor in there. Okay, processor's in there. And let us, just to be safe, throw the heat sink back on so we don't fry anything. I like to screw these screws back on in kind of a zigzag pattern, like putting a tire on. Whenever I deal with processors, I do that just because you don't want to have too much pressure on one edge of the processor. Okay, now we can just screw this last guy in there. Now, we have processor, motherboard, stick of RAM, and we know where the power button is. This should power the computer on. This is the power adapter it came with. We're going to test the power adapter for voltage first, make sure that the power adapter is okay. I'm going to plug this in quickly. Okay, now let's get our voltmeter out. Set it for volts. Take the black lead, put it on the outside. Take the red lead, touch it on the inner part. Not the little pin on the inside, there's a little pin in there. Don't touch that. Just the inner part of the cylinder. And let's see how much volts we get. 19 volts. Okay, power adapter is putting out the correct voltage. So now, be very careful, plug your power adapter in, hope you don't see any sparks, then press the power button and see if anything happens. And we're getting no fans, no nothing. The only other thing we could do is unplug the power adapter. These are the power LEDs. Let's just hook to put the top cover on, hook this one back, this one ribbon cable back on and see if any lights show up. Okay, make sure that's on flush so it's not short-circuiting anything under this metal here. Okay, everything looks smooth. This board's back in properly. We have the LEDs lined up. Let's plug this in and see if we get a, a power LED over here going on. Nothing. Press the power button. Ooh, we get power. 
the blue light turned on for power. That's a really good sign. But there's no fan activity or anything else. Maybe the fan doesn't go on at boot up. It's very possible. Okay. Well, that blue light went on, so that's a good sign. Let's make sure that switch is, switch is still bothering me a little bit. Okay, let's get this cover on. Top plate on. Snap everything back in. Sure, everything's flush and snapped in tight. And start putting the screws back in this thing. It appears to be most of the screws from that bottom. Let's put the hard drive back in. Now I just want to get the hard drive and the monitor in and see what happens. I'm really curious to get the monitor back on. I want to see if it's displaying anything, any error messages or anything. Okay, let's throw the screen back on and see if we can see anything here. I'm just going to put it back on on kind of a somewhat temporary basis here. I think Dell got kind of smart putting these big flat screws for the monitor. It stops the monitor from flopping all around, which is a problem with laptops that are used. The monitor used to get real flappy. Okay. Now, the screen is back on and screwed in. Now, I'm not going to mess with any of these wires, the webcam, anything like that yet. I just want to see what if we get any messages on the screen when I plug the LCD cable back in, which is this guy, which snaps right in. Okay, now we got the screen in, we got the hard drive in. Let's plug it back in and see what comes up. Hit the power button. We got the blue power light. Let's see if we get anything on the screen. And we're getting nothing on the screen. Not even a faint background image or anything. So just in case, you know, unplug the power again. Let's flip this guy around. Pop this RAM out. Try another stick, a stick that you know is good. And again, we're not getting anything on the screen. It's possible this might be more than just the webcam. Let me uh, unplug this. 
it's possible this might be giving power to the inverter. Let's try it. This is the other connector. These are just antenna. We don't have to worry about them right now. And this poor little doll, I think, is dead. Nothing on the screen. Um, we clean up the motherboard best we could. At least we're getting a power light. We know the adapter's okay. So we did everything we could for this guy. So uh, this guy definitely needs a new motherboard. Thanks for watching.